your realisation will certainly help others. It is the best help possible. But there are no others to be helped. For a realised being sees only the self. Just like a goldsmith estimating the gold in various items of jewellery sees only gold. When you identify yourself with the body, then only the forms and shapes are there. But when you transcend your body, the others disappear, along with your body consciousness. See if other things such as plants and trees exist at all, apart from the self. Find it out. You think that you see them. The thought is projected out from the self. Find out from where it rises. Thoughts will cease to rise and the self alone will remain. It is like a cinema show. There is the light on the screen and the shadows flitting across it impress the audience as the enactment of some piece. If in the same play the audience is also shown on the screen as part of the performance, the seer and the scene will then both be on the screen. Apply this to yourself. You are the screen. The self has created the ego. The ego has its accretions of thoughts, which are displayed as the world, the trees and the plants. But in reality, these are nothing but the self. If you see the self, the same will be found to be all, everywhere and always. Nothing but the self exists. Even the thought, I do not realise, is a hindrance. In fact, the self alone is. Our real nature is mukti. But we are imagining we are bound and are making various strenuous attempts to become free, while we are all the while free. This will be understood only when we reach that stage. We will be surprised that we were frantically trying to obtain something which we have always been and are. An illustration will make this clear. A man goes to sleep in this hall. 
He dreams he has gone on a world tour and is roaming over hill and dale, forest and country, desert and sea, across various continents, and after many years of weary and strenuous travel, returns to this country, reaches Tiruvallamalai, enters the ashram and walks to the hall. Just at that moment, he wakes up and finds he has not moved an inch. He is sleeping where he lay down. He has not returned after great effort to this hall, but is, and always has been, in the hall. It is exactly like that. If it is asked, why being free, do we imagine that we are bound, I answer, why being in the hall, did you imagine you are on a world adventure, crossing hill and dale, desert and sea? It is all mind, maya, illusion. The ignorant person sees only the mind, which is a mere reflection of the light of pure consciousness arising from the heart, of the heart itself, they are ignorant. Why? Because their mind is extroverted and has never sought its source. Just as water in a pot reflects the enormous sun within the narrow limits of the pot, even so the vasanas, the latent tendencies of the mind of the individual, acting as a reflecting medium, catch the all-pervading, infinite light of consciousness arising from the heart. The form of this reflection is the phenomenon we call mind. Seeing only this reflection the ignorant person is deluded, believing that they are a finite being, a jiva, the individual self. The obstacles which hinder the realization of the self are the habits of the mind, the vasanas. To overcome the mental habits, we need to realize the self. It is the ego which raises difficulties, creating obstacles, and then suffering from the complexity of apparent paradoxes. Find out who makes the inquiries and the self will be found. The nature of bondage is merely the rising, ruinous thought 
I am different from the reality. Since one can surely not remain separate from the reality, reject that thought whenever it rises. People speak of memory and oblivion, of the fullness of the self. Oblivion and memory are only thought forms. They will alternate only so long as there are thoughts. But reality lies beyond these. Memory or oblivion must be dependent on something. That something must be foreign to the self as well. Otherwise, there would not be oblivion. That upon which memory and oblivion depend is the idea of the individual self. When one looks for it, this individual I cannot be found because it is not real. Hence, this I is synonymous with illusion or ignorance. To know that there never was ignorance is the goal of all the spiritual teachings. Ignorance must be of one who is aware. Awareness is jnana. Jnana is eternal and natural. A jnana is unnatural, unreal. One does not remain content because samskaras, innate mental tendencies, have not been destroyed. Unless the samskaras cease to exist, there will always be doubt and confusion. All efforts are directed to destroying doubt and confusion. But to do so, the roots must be cut. Their roots are the samskaras. They are rendered ineffective by practice as prescribed by the guru. The guru leaves it to the seeker to do this much so that they themselves might find out that there is no ignorance. Hearing the truth is the first stage. But if the understanding is not firm, one has to practice reflection. An uninterrupted contemplation. These two processes scorch the seeds of samskaras so that they are rendered ineffective. Some extraordinary people get unshakable jnana after hearing the truth only once. These are advanced seekers. Beginners take longer to gain it. But ignorance has never arisen. It has no 
real being. That which is, is only knowledge. Find out who does not realize and what one does not realize. Then it will be clear that there is no ignorance. If there is a goal to be reached, it cannot be permanent. The goal must already be there. We seek to reach the goal with the ego, but the goal exists before the ego. What is in the goal is even prior to our birth, that is, to the birth of the ego. Because we exist, the ego appears to exist too. But if we look on the self as the ego, then we become the ego. If as the mind, we become the mind. If as the body, we become the body. It is the thought which builds up sheaths in so many ways. The shadow on the water is found to be shaking. Can anyone stop the shaking of the shadow? If it would cease to shake, you would not notice the water, but only the light. Similarly, Take no notice of the ego and its activities, but see only the light behind. The ego is the thought I. The true I is the self. Realization is already there. The state free from thoughts is the only real state. There is no such action as realization. Is there anyone who is not realizing the self? Does anyone deny their own existence? Speaking of realization, it implies two selves, the one to realize, the other to be realized. What is not already realized is sought to be realized. Once we admit our existence, how is it? that we do not know ourself. It is because of the thoughts in the mind. It is the mind that veils our happiness. How do we know that we exist? If you say because of the world around us, 
then how do you know that you existed in deep sleep? How to get rid of the mind? Is it the mind that wants to kill itself? The mind cannot kill itself. So your business is to find the real nature of the mind. Then you will know that there is no mind. When the self is sought, the mind is nowhere. Abiding in the self, one need not worry about the mind. Mukti, or liberation, is our nature. It is another name for us. Our wanting mukti is a very funny thing. It is like a man who is in the shade, voluntarily leaving the shade, going into the sun, feeling the severity of the heat there, making great efforts to get back into the shade and then rejoicing. How sweet is the shade. I have reached the shade at last. We are all doing exactly the same. We are not different from the reality. We imagine we are different. That is, we create the feeling of difference and then undergo great sadhana to get rid of the imagined difference and realise the oneness. But why imagine or create the feeling of difference and then destroy it? What is bliss but your own being? You are not apart from being, which is the same as bliss. You are now thinking that you are the mind or the body, which are both changing and transient. But you are unchanging. And eternal. That is what you should know. This ignorance must go. Again, who says I am ignorant? They must be the witness of ignorance. And that is what you are. Socrates said, I know that I do not know. Can it be ignorance? It is wisdom. Can the feeling you have in this place be bliss? When you leave this place, you say you are unhappy. 
Therefore, this peace is not permanent. It is mixed with unhappiness, which is felt in another place. Therefore, you cannot find bliss in places and in periods of time. It must be permanent in order that it may be useful. It is your own being which is permanent. Be the self, and that is bliss. You are always that. The self is always realized. It is not necessary to seek to realize what is already and always realized. For you cannot deny your own existence. That existence is consciousness, the self. Unless you exist, you cannot ask questions. So you must admit your own existence. That existence is a self. It is already realized. Therefore, the effort to realize results only in your realizing your present mistake, that you have not realized yourself. There is no fresh realization. The self becomes revealed. The idea of time and the idea that it will take years to realize the self is only in your mind. It is not in the self. There is no time in the self. Time arises as an idea after the ego arises. But you are the self beyond time and space. You exist even in the absence of time and space. Were it true that you realize it later, it means that you are not realized now. Absence of realization in the present moment may be repeated at any moment in the future, for time is infinite. It is wrong to consider realization to be impermanent. It is the true eternal state which cannot change. You are already that. Time and space cannot affect the self. They are in you. 
So also, all that you see around you is in you. There's a story to illustrate this point. A lady had a precious necklace round her neck. Once in her excitement, she forgot it and thought that the necklace was lost. She became anxious and looked for it in her home, but could not find it. She asked her friends and neighbours if they knew anything about the necklace. They did not. At last, a kind friend of hers told her to feel the necklace round her neck. She found that it had all along been round her neck, and she was happy. When others asked her later if she had found the necklace, which was lost, she said, Yes, I have found it. She still felt that she had recovered a lost jewel. Now, did she lose it at all? It was all along round her neck. But judge her feelings. She was as happy as if she had recovered a lost jewel. Similarly with us. We imagine that we will realise that self sometime. Whereas we are never anything but the self. The conception that there is a goal and a path to it is wrong. We are the goal or peace always. To get rid of the notion that we are not peace is all that is required. Any guru will say only what I am saying now. They will not give you anything that you have not already got. It is impossible for anyone to get what they have not got already. Even if they get any such thing, It will go as it came. What comes will also go. What always is will alone remain. The Guru cannot give you anything new which you don't already have. Removal of the notion that we have not realised the self is all that is required. We are always the self, only we don't realise it. We go round and round in search of the self, saying, Where is the self? Where is it? Till at last the dawn of vision and knowledge is reached and we say, This is the self, this is me. We should acquire that vision. 
when once that vision is reached, there will be no attachments. Even if one mixes with the world and moves about in it, When once you put on shoes, your feet do not feel the pain of walking on any number of stones or thorns on the way. You walk about without fear or care, even if there are mountains on the way. In the same way, everything will be natural to those who have attained Jnani Drishti. What is there apart from one's own self? If the mind subsides, the whole world subsides. Mind is the cause of all this. If that subsides, the natural state presents itself. The self proclaims itself at all times as I I. It is self luminous. It is here. All this is that. We are in that only. Being in it, why search for it? The ancients say, making the vision absorbed in jnana, one sees the world as Brahman. 